Okay, I feel like I've hidden the just chat or starting soon screen for long enough. Anyways, so things we're gonna be doing tonight. Uh, I have things to teach people. I did a really poor explanation of frame data on stream. It was very rushed, so I kind of want to go over that one again and go back like a little bit more of a beginner's guide on how to do, or like at least like how to read and understand frame data. And I guess more of just like the application, because not necessarily understanding frame data is important. Well, I mean, like, because it, it, reading it's really easy. It's like how you apply it is where things get difficult. I picked Street Fighter V because it's just like a really simple way to um, explain this kind of stuff. But this this sort of thing can be explained like literally in any fighting game ever. It's just easier for me to use Street Fighter V. Alright, so let's talk about frame data for a minute. So, in fighting games and every single video game ever, this right here, this glorious page, is essentially how frame data is listed in everything. Okay, it's very important for you to understand what frame data is as far as like fighting games go Because it actually like allows you to inform like make better informed decisions Now the degree in which you study frame data isn't necessarily as important Especially depending on the type of game you're playing Games like Tekken have a design philosophy where frame data isn't nearly as important I actually believe that Harada came out and said that the reason why Tekken never really got the frame data update is because he didn't want people to care about the frames, he wanted you to play by feel. Frame data, however, is still very good to have because it can create informed decisions. Now, every single attack that is done in a fighting game is broken up into three separate parts. You have startup, you have active, and you have recovery. Now, startup is the part where you go from a neutral state, which is any state that you're able to perform an action. So, startup will be when the move is going from a neutral state to when the hitbox becomes active. Active state is when the hitbox is actually capable of hitting your opponent, or the attack is able to hit your opponent. Recovery is going from the moment the hitbox stops being active to back when you're able to be in that neutral state where you're able to move, block, attack, whatever. Really the most important part that we want to take away from this right now is just to look at startup frames and recovery. Now recovery can technically change depending on whether it's hit on counter hit, whether it's hit on normal hit, or whether it's blocked. Generally, things are going to show you what happens when it's blocked or when it's on hit. As you can see right here, this is the recovery, or this is the recovery frames if it's whiffed, this is the recovery frames if it's hit, and this is the recovery on block. Most things will tell you it's either plus three, minus five, plus six, whatever. So the thing about this you need to worry about is there are two separate ways people tend to explain moves and their behavior on recovery. You have either plus or minus, or you have safe or unsafe. Now the reason why these two things are explained differently is because being minus or being plus does not necessarily mean being safe or unsafe. Generally if you're plus, don't get me wrong, generally if you're plus, this means that you're going to recover however many frames faster than your opponent. So if I do standing light punch in with Zangief, because we're looking at Zangief's frame data right now. If I do standing light punch and it's blocked by my opponent, I have three frames I recover three frames faster than my opponent. If I do something like standing medium kick on block, I'm actually minus three frames. So, the reason why that, or why that I'm saying that minus does not necessarily mean safe or unsafe is because I can be minus by a certain amount and still technically be quote unquote safe. To give you an example, in Tekken, the fastest move in Tekken generally aside from Yoshimitsu's flash with no sword, is 10 frames fast. That's everyone's jab is generically 10 frames. If I do a move in Tekken that is 6 frames, I'm technically safe, but if I hit buttons afterwards, I'm probably going to get counter hit out. Knowing that, we know that technically being minus is not necessarily safe or unsafe, we can kind of make informed decisions here. Now in Street Fighter, the fastest move is three frames. So technically, you can get an idea that going through this frame data, anything that is minus two or less is actually safe. Standing medium kick, we're just gonna look at that. It's minus three on block. 
That means this can theoretically on paper be punished. There are things that are very minus on block that technically can't be punished due to pushback, but we're not worrying about that. One of the things that's really nice about Street Fighter is if we go to the actual game mode right now, um, you see the stuff up there like right under my health bar? That, when it where it says frame and it's zero, that'll actually tell me how like plus or minus I am if I'm safe or unsafe. So, uh, if we do standing light punch, uh, we want this unblock actually. We can just guard all of If I do that, this says that I'm plus three, and we can confirm that on the frame data if we go back to it. Now we said that unblock standing medium kick is minus three. And minus three, we know that's punishable by any three frame jab. So, if we do, and this is why I chose Street Fighter. Street Fighter allows you to record the guard recovery action of your dunk. So that's really nice. Um, we want to do this. We'll set him to do a jab. There. So, alright, we'll look at this. Crouching medium kick. That's minus four. When I do this, I'm going to get punched in the face. But, but, that's if I do this at point blank. If I space this out properly, this move's actually technically safe. Let's get a little bit close there. Boop. Look at that. He doesn't have the range to hit me because that move's so stubby. So there, technically things can be unsafe on paper. Does not necessarily mean though that it's unsafe. So that's just a very basic understanding of frame data. You can determine whether or not a move is safe or unsafe on paper. In practicality it might be a little bit different. But you can actually take that still a step further. So. Anyways, we're just going to look at a simple frame trap with Geef, his headbutt, into, um, jab or something. But, like, since head, so, I'm, get I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Frame trap is when you do something that is positive-ish on block. It's usually, like, one or two frames, uh, or you have one or two positive frames. Something that'll entice the opponent to press buttons afterwards. If I do, or if I do, let's say, headbutt, and I know my opponent's going to mash jab afterwards because my opponent can't resist mashing jab. If I do this, and my next move that I do counter hits that move, which a counter hit is when you attack during the startup animation, or you hit someone during their startup animation of their attack. If I get a counter hit, that's how I know that I'm doing a frame trap. If that is a frame trap, the headbutt is a light kick, will be a counter hit. In this case, it's trading, which allows me to know that this isn't a frame trap. If it's trading like this, I know that this is not a frame trap. Uh, my opponent can mash out of this. But if I do, let's say, headbutt into crushing jab, that's a frame trap. You can see that because I have that little like counter over on the side. So most fighters, so most fighters, it's more technical than they seem. Every fighting game has this. This right now, what I'm explaining, is a universal technique that you can use in anything. Right? Because, like, sure, in this case I'm using Zangief as an example of what a frame trap is. But, you can take the example of find a move that's like plus two unblock, and then try to make your opponent jab afterwards, and then try to interrupt them with something, or find something that interrupts them. You can apply that to any game. For instance, um, Armor King in Tekken, when you do the, um, god, what the fuck is it, up forward 1 plus 2, whatever that is, not burning knuckle, or whatever, is jump up and he just act like double fist, hammer fist you, whatever it is, up forward 1 plus 2, that's plus 2 on block, alright, um, if your opponent is doing something after that, that is, or you can set up counter. All a frame trap is, is just a fancy word for saying counter hit setup. Because in most cases, on counter hit, the behavior of a move on recovery changes. Counter hits can often, like, not necessarily in this game, for example, but in Tekken, a counter hit can actually cause a crumple stun, which means you can get a full combo off of that. There is a combo with Armor King where his counter hit back one, or his back one normally doesn't combo. But if I counter hit back one with Armor King, I can get a combo off of that. 
So there are ways you can set up that counter hit. Frame chats being the way that you do that. So if I'm playing online with somebody and I know that they can't resist mashing, I want to try to frame trap them. But yeah, so you can really just apply frame traps to pretty much any fighting game. You can even actually even apply the pushback thing to any fighting game. And this might be unsafe in Street Fighter, but or on paper, but because of the pushback and the range that I'm using this at, Ryu doesn't have any way to punish this. Even at this being at minus three. His jab's too stubborn. Both jabs even, actually. So you're baiting them to open themselves up? Yeah, exactly. Because if I'm doing headbutt, and I know he's gonna mash afterwards. I can set I can set things up. I'm bas basically a frame trap is to catch opponents that like to press buttons. So like me, anytime I block an electric wind god fist. If I know that they're hitting buttons a lot, I'm gonna I'm gonna frame trap them. I'm gonna try to punish them for doing some stuff. And the reason why frame trapping, especially in Street Fighter, is really powerful, is because you're per you're forcing your opponent to stop hitting buttons now. Otherwise, they're going to eat, like, an unnecessary amount of damage. So if I do this, or if I do this, boom, too many times, what happens when my opponent stops block, or start, starts blocking it, and doesn't want to press buttons afterwards? They've decided they don't want to mash because they don't want to get frame trapped. Alright, so I can just do that. I can do the same thing. I can essentially run the frame trap the same way. Alright. I'm still plus two. At plus two, boom, dash in. Zero. I can do that. If the pushback gets too far away, I can jump back in and just basically reset the whole thing. Alright. I have options. And because that I'm forcing that frame trap, I'm forcing my opponent to play a certain way. Which is great, because that way I can limit the amount of responses that they have. Things that will beat frame traps, however... Um, if they do anything invincible, you can beat frame traps by essentially just mashing like an EXDP because it it has armor or something. You can beat frame traps just simply by not falling for it. If I'm doing headbutt and Ryu's not reacting to it, and I'm not doing this, um, I have to figure out a different game plan. Uh, if we just like just set him to block, that's it. No recovery on anything. The moment I do standing light kick, I'm punishable again. This technically can be punished. This pretty much just ends my turn at minus three. That's it. If I try to cancel into Lariat from here, that's minus 16. He can show you the crap out of me for that. But that's just one of the things. If he continues to, or continues to do it, I can keep going back in. I can change up my frame trap to make him a little bit or dissuade him even more from pressing buttons. Just do crouching short, crouching short. I can throw him since I'm playing a grapple character. Fighting games realistically are essentially just like a rock, paper, scissors, shoot match. Just play it at like a much faster pace and a higher level of intelligence. It's not necessarily just three options, but you can break it down. You can break pretty much everything you're doing in fighting games down to just simple options. And that applies to Jump Force, that applies to Grand Blue, that applies to Dragon Ball Fighter Z. applies to everything. Everything you're doing in fighting games is essentially just options that you are just ex trying to exploit. It, like a flowchart, essentially. So if I notice that he blocks this, right? And then I go in for the frame trap. The frame trap didn't work, so what do I do now at, at this range? Do I try to whiff punish a response? Do I jump in and try to rerun the frame trap? learn to jail exactly right now if he's just gonna block i can just jail him in the corner with a block strike you're basically just trying to go through a flow chart of options and then you're gonna punish as or like when applicable there's so many ways like a flow chart of options that you can do but like just doing a simple like just simple stuff like this will actually improve your game quite a bit